You ask what you always wanted to know about me and I answer in my 365 days journal. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Drunk Journal Art. Nice to see you here today. Yeah, today I want to answer some more of your questions that you have put to the comment section below my past videos of this 365 days journal. Thank you very much for all of your questions. I'm really, really happy to have so many questions to answer and it's really amazing for me that you have this big interest in my background and in my person and in, yeah, you know, in everything. Um, that I'm doing. I'm really, really honored that you asked so many questions and I'm feeling really connected to you since I've started this series and I want to say a very big thank you to all of you who have asked those questions. So if you've never heard about this 365 days journal or this idea behind this journal, then please check out the info box. There's a link with the whole playlist of every video that I have published within this series so that you can watch what you perhaps have missed. And of course, um, you can still ask your questions. So if there's something that you always wanted to know about me, then please leave a comment below this video or one of the others. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. And then I will try to answer your questions in my upcoming videos. And this series is also meant to show you some examples that you can use for your own journaling. So um, I would like to try to um, create my pages in this journal so that you can take the questions that were um, that I were asked for your own journaling. So these questions are some kind of journaling prompts, some kind of journaling ideas that you of course can use for your own junk journals as well. Um, that's the reason why I'm making this series. And of course, <laughs> another reason is why, um, why I'm making this series is that I want to answer your questions, of course. But please feel free to take the questions that I'm answering here and put them as a prompt or as a something like inspiration um, to your own junk journal projects. So while I'm preparing my actual project for today, um, I want to make some cards today. Those cards you will see in my upcoming videos of this journal as well. Um, I will only use one of those cards today, but the others that I'm making here <coughs> will go into my journal as well, of course. Um, and you will see them in my next videos. Um, while I'm preparing this project, um, I want to answer to a general question that you have asked me and later on I will answer to some other questions as well. So um, the first question that I got um, came from Elaine, Pam, Judy, Corinne, Mary, Matilda, Angelique, Laurie, Sally, Tina, Vicky, Fairy Crafting and Collectors, Sita, Denise, Valerie, Leoma, Art, Igneus, Idol, Marina, Angela, Brenda and Susan. The list is really long. <laughs> and that question is obviously something that you are really interested in. Um, so the question is, um, did you have any special art training or um, have you taken some formal art classes or are you self-taught? So um, you are wondering if I went to an art school before I started my YouTube channel or yeah, before I started uh, making some art in public. So the question, uh, the question, the answer is really, really short because the answer is no. I haven't studied art. I um, didn't went, I didn't go to any art school or I, um, yeah, I, I haven't taken any art training or classes or something like that. Everything I know and everything I'm showing on my channel, um, I have learned by myself, by experimenting, by watching other people um, on YouTube, for example. I, yeah, I <laughs> didn't go to an art school. But um, I guess that a really, really big influence um, came from my grandma. So if you have followed this series, you know that my grandma is a really, really big um, idol for me. She 
influenced me really, really much, um, especially when I was a child. I was allowed to take a look over her shoulder while she was doing her art um, and she uh, made some really gorgeous oil paintings and she also worked with silk and this silk paint and that was really fascinating for me. I think when I was a child I got this um, fascination for um, fluid mediums so um, when she put her silk paint to some scarves or something like that um, and when this paint um, was going into this material um, this yeah moving paint was always really really fascinating for me and I um, guess it's a really yeah, big thing for me today as well. And that's also the reason why I have chosen this technique that you can see in this video um, for answering this question. So I'm using some of my scraps that I've dressed up a little bit um, and I'm trying to use those for my um, project for today. Um, perhaps you know these scraps from another video. I have um, a video about how you can dress up your scraps and come to a result that is similar to what you can see in this video here. So I will link that video down below for you as well so that you can watch that if you perhaps have missed that. And um, yeah, I would like to say a really, really big thank you to everyone who has spread this video to the social media world. Um, you have left so many wonderful comments below this scrap uh, video where I dressed up the, the scraps. And there were many, many people who um, made their own version of this tutorial or of this idea. And I want to thank you that you have tagged me on Instagram and Facebook and even on YouTube. You've made your own videos and you were so thrilled about this technique. I was really, really overwhelmed about this reaction. I've never expected that. For me, it was like, yeah, it's an idea, but I have not expected this feedback. So thank you very, very much for this. And why am I talking so long about this video um, and your reaction? Um, on the one hand, of course, I'm really thankful. But on the other hand, this is also part of my answer to this question, um, because sometimes you are my art school teachers. Um, the junk journal community is a really outstanding community. There's so much help and so much, yeah, being together in this community that I can learn every day from you. And um, sometimes you have questions. Um, <sighs> I can't make an example at the moment, but sometimes you have questions that bring me and my artsy brain to the next level. You ask something that was not in my mind before and by answering it, um, my brain gets a step further to another point. And um, I'm really thankful to be in this junk journal community. I think this is this is a really special community and yeah, I have to say I've never expected that I can make a living from my YouTube channel and my Etsy shop one day um, and it's because of you. I mean, you as my viewers and as my customers, you have helped me that this can come true, that I can work to make money, but that I have something to work that I love. And this is also part of my art education. Um, this is part of my learning process. Um, and mm, when I started my YouTube channel, I think I was the first German speaking junk journaler on YouTube. I mean, not the very first perhaps, but I guess the very first that um, has made regular videos. I found 
some German videos uh, when I have started drunk journaling, but that was like, uh, yeah, videos that were five years old or two years old or something like that. And um, then I found all of those English speaking channels and that was a really, really big help for me. Um, I've learned so much from the, the English speaking channels. I'm so thankful for that. I will be thankful for that for the rest of my life because you've introduced me to so many techniques that I've never heard uh, before. And there were so many mediums also um, that I was introduced by you. <coughs> so um, I guess, for example, it's only an example, but I guess I would never have come to the idea to, to use distress oxide ink um, for my projects because I would have never um i i um only got in contact with this medium um by the english speaking channels and that's a crazy thing i think you as the english speaking junk journalists have also a really big influence to the german junk journal community we are really really thankful and we can, can learn a lot from you and that's also something that yeah is part of my art journey. So um, in the beginning it was really hard because sometimes you want to get some special stuff that is mentioned in English videos. Uh, it was not so easy. I've started, for example, with some children watercolors to distress my tags and my pages and that stuff. Um, and then there was this point where I thought, okay, it is possible to use really simple things. Um, <clears throat> as I said, I've started with the, the simplest things that you can imagine. But then I thought, let's try to use some more professional stuff that is also meant to use for this or that technique. I was like, mm, I want to try out new things, new mediums, new um, techniques and that stuff. And so I went from this really simple children watercolor stuff to more professional mediums. But of course, there's no right or wrong with the one or the other. Um, but for me, it helps also to grow with my art when I can try out new things and some more professional things. So today um, I would also like to answer some questions um, about pets. So um, there were some people who have asked me about um, pets. So um, these people were Mary Beth, June, Janet, Gail, Bonnie, Debbie, Ellie, Linda Marie, um, Connie and Selba74. So um, you have asked me, do you have any pets? Are you a cat or a dog person? What is your favorite animal and why? Um, if you were an animal, which animal would you be and why? And there's also one question that seems to have no context to this that I've uh, read before. Um, and this question is, <laughs> how did you meet Susanne from Bollenhut Art? So <laughs> let me explain you why this is, has a context. So the first pet I want to talk about is Louis. You can see him here in this little video um, thing and you can also see him on my page that I'm creating in my journal now. So Louis is my little dog or he was my dog. Um, I got him in the year two, 2012 um, and it was coincidence that I found him. I was on um, an online app where you can find those people who um, sell pets. And I found him on the very last page of my uh, search. So when I typed in my search words, then he was on the very last page. It was a Sunday afternoon and I was a little bit afraid um, if I can call the person who was selling him. But this picture was so... <laughs> cute and I had to meet him so I took my phone and I've called this woman um, and she said oh um, it doesn't matter that it is Sunday you can come and you can uh, look at him and decide if you want to have him so um, I went there with my uh, partner <clears throat> and 
yeah, I took no money with me because I thought I want to look at him and then decide if I really want to have him and then I will come back with some money and um, buy him. So yeah, <laughs> that was the plan. But the reality was a little bit different because he came out of, of um, his little dog house there and he was the coolest dog I've ever seen. He was so tiny, um, but he was so cool compared to the other dogs that this woman had there on in her house. And um, when he came out of this um, house, he looked at me and then he came to my feet and he laid down to my feet. And that was the second I've fallen in love with this dog. So I um, uh, went to uh, this, you know, uh, money cash machine how is that called <laughs> where you can get the money with your little credit card and um, i took some money went back paid for the dog and took the dog with me um, and yeah then he was um, with me for approximately eight years um, and in the year two, 2020 i had to decide that i have to give him away it was a really really hard decision and i don't want to go in detail why i had to give him away because it was such a hard time for me i get i got so much shitstorm on facebook and um, the social media medias where I tried to find a new home for from for him um, so that I don't want to bring this up to my mind now I, I can't talk about that because it was so hard for me but I know that it was the right decision um, I made this decision because I wanted to have um, a new and a good home for him and I knew that I can't um, manage that anymore it broke my heart, but I know that it was the right decision. And this is also the point where this question comes. Um, how did you met Susanne from Bollenhut Art? Um, that seems to have no context with the rest. <laughs> but um, when I had this post on Facebook that I'm searching for a new home for my dog, um, she has written me a message um, and she has asked me about the dog and she um, had considered if she wants to have the dog. So um, that was the first day we've ever messaged each other. Unfortunately, it was not possible that my dog can come to her um, and her family. I think the family was not um, yeah, ready to have a dog. In the meantime, she has a dog um, as well, but... Um, Obviously, it was not the right point. So, but that's the answer how I met Susanne. <laughs> okay, so um, another question was, are you, oh no, let's, uh, yeah, let's go on with that one. Are you a cat or a dog person? That's really hard for me to answer because I guess, um, yeah, because I had this dog, I am a dog person. And I feel really connected to dogs. Every time I see a dog, I have to go there and, you know, I have to pet him and um, see how he is reacting. I really like to um, watch the reaction of dogs and her behavior and that stuff. Um, but when I see a cat, it's some... Yeah, some kind of similar, I would say. Um, but it depends on the character of the dog or the cat. Um, if I'm a cat or a dog person, <laughs> do you know what I mean? If there's a really nice and friendly cat, it may be that this day I'm a cat person. <coughs> if the cat is angry, I'm a dog person. Do you know what I mean? I think there's no real answer to this question. So... Um, then there was this question, um, what is your favorite animal? And if you were an animal, which animal would you be and why? And this is nearly the same answer. I mean, it's the same animal. So um, I have no idea how this um, animal, <laughs> what, what the English name for this animal is. In German, it's called Kurzohrrüsselspringer. So that means long, uh, something like short ear, 
uh, long-nosed jumping animal. <laughs> Please don't laugh about my translation. So it's a really small animal. It's uh, some kind of um, mouse-shaped and he has a really um, thin and short no, not so short. He has a nose that looks like a straw, a really short straw. And um, he can move his nose very, very fast. I think he is doing that um, when he smells something. And this looks so funny that this Kurzohr Rüsselspringer can bring everyone um, into a really good and funny mood. And... If I were an animal, I would like to be a Kurzohrrüsselspringer because this animal can make everyone, yeah, into this good feelings and into, into this good motion. Uh, when you see him, you have to laugh. You have no other chance. You have to laugh. And perhaps you know that I'm making some jokes as well. Sometimes you're on my channel and you've left many, many really nice comments that you like my... Uh, jokes and that stuff. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, but that's also the uh, the reason why I've chosen this animal that I would like to be because yeah I would like to make people happy and um, that's what he can do as well. Um, then when I look back a little bit uh, more to the past I had some more pets um, and for those, I'm making this page here on the right side of my double spread here. Um, approximately 2001 or two, 2002, I think, um, I had some mouses. So um, I have found this little uh, paper where you can see this hand-drawn mouse that what was gifted to be... Oh, Sorry, that was gifted to me by my very first boyfriend that I had when, yeah, this mouse time was in my life. And he has hand-drawn this and he has written a little message for me. And I have kept this little paper for all of those years. I don't know why I have this there. It's so special for me, but I have no special reason why I have it. But I found it and I wanted to include that to my spread here because it's just so sweet. And yeah, we had those little tiny mouses um, for many years. Um, there was a whole mouse family in a little cage and we've built some special things for them. I really enjoyed to <clears throat> think about new things that um, those little animals could like. We've built some wooden houses for them. On Christmas, they got a Christmas tree with eatable things on it and um, I was a really really lucky girl because um, two times I could um, see how a mouse is getting some babies and I could uh, watch them while they were growing up and that was a really really big treasure for me. Um, I think it's a really really yeah, it's it's such a strong memory for me. It was a, such a fun time to have those little animals and to take care about them. Um, so that this little mouse here is, yeah, my representation of this time. Okay, so I think that was it for now, for today, from me here. Um, I hope you liked my spread. I hope you will get some inspiration for your own journals as well. And of course, I hope we will see the next time with some more questions. Please feel free to take this idea of journaling about pets for your own junk journal projects. And stay creative, stay healthy. See you the next time. Bye bye.